Hang on to that a minute, will you? Mm. Edna, we only want to see you, right? Now listen, there is no shame in your granny's past. We all know that. What do you reckon? She'll not thank you for broadcasting it to half the street and all that. <laughs> there is no point in upsetting yourself for something that happened a long time ago. Upset? Not a bit of understatement at you from where I'm sitting. <laughs> Are you going to say out useful today or what? Why don't we come back later and try again when Edna's actually in the house? Rob, look, they'll be back any minute, OK? I said six months. I have for breakfast every day. But what if I can't wait? <sighs> Why are you up so early? Well, I couldn't resist the smell of bacon and eggs. Morning. What have I done to deserve this? Not that I'm complaining. How can anyone that gets up at the crack of dawn be smiling so much? I've got plenty to smile about me. And I've got an idea that'll put a smile on all our faces. Why don't we go away? All four of us. A couple of weeks in summer. Abroad? No, a caravan in real. Close abroad. I'm up for it. Can we go to Falaraki? Make your mind up, Andy. Yesterday you were on about buying the farm. So long. Come on, Katie, be a right laugh. What's stopping us? All I'm saying is, you never know what's around the corner, do you? Let's just see what happens. Well, money's not a problem for us, is it, Rob? Being your own boss, we'll be loaded by summer. You won't for it until you put him off. <laughs> You're not kidding. Can't get a word in. Fancy running to town for some brochures, Katie? Look, I can't. Donna, I've got an assignment to finish. Marlon left before breakfast again. He's behaving odd lately, have you noticed? I think I may be able to shed a little light on the matter. Hang on a minute, so Marlon goes to the library a couple of times, everybody goes, whoa, that's odd. And yet I could run round this place waving my underpants above my head and you wouldn't bat an eyelid. Paddy, be serious. He's your best friend. Yeah, which is why I'm not treating him like some sort of fragile project. He needs support, not round-the-clock surveillance. Sorry, Alan. What were you saying? I better get going. See you tonight. What is it? Oh, I came across an article about a brilliant young swimmer's career being cut short by a heart defect, and that now she's aspiring to compete again following a heart transplant. Trisha's heart. I shouldn't have shown it to Marlon, I know. How can you be sure? Well, we had a lovely letter of gratitude, and the girl in the article has the same name. On top of which, the transplant coincides with the time of Trisha's death. Do you think he'll try to make contact? Well, I, I suggested he write a letter. I think he accepted that uh, anything else would not be a good idea. I hope so, for Marlon's sake. Emmerdale on CBC will be right back. What's up? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, there is. I can read you like a book. It's my fault, isn't it? Andy, what are you going on about? This stupid holiday thing. I should have known it would be the last thing you'd want to do. Well, why do you say that? Well, it's obvious. Rob and Donna. You see enough of them here. I need to have an holiday away from them. Right. What are you doing? But what does it look like? Okay, you don't have to do that. Let me spoil you for a change. I don't want you thinking that I'll take you for granted. Yeah, what if you did once in a while? Not a crime, is it? Being selfish. No one's perfect, eh? You are. Oh, just shut up, Andy, and for once, stop going on. Well, what am I supposed to go on about? Andy, please, just stop making something out of nothing. Come on, this is going nowhere. Please, just go to work. I will. I think I understand sheep better now it is. Tell me. 
save you the trouble and wants a divorce. But don't joke, Rob. So what did he want? He wanted to know why I wasn't bothered about going on holiday. And what did you tell him? Well, nothing that made sense. I had to go at him for being thoughtful. <laughs> He'll hate your guts in no time. Oh, thanks. I feel a lot better now. You've got to leave him. There's no other way. I know. But after that? Well, like we said, you go away for a while. <sighs> That's what scares me, Rob. Well, we'll meet in secret. As often as possible. We're not every day like now, though. Six months, and it'll be better than now. Nothing to prove or hide. Dad and Andy will just have to accept it. Are you scared? Terrified of losing my family. But one look at you reminds me why it's worth the risk. Hi. Oh, you're a gent. Well, as you can see, I'm a clumsy twit who buys more than she can carry. On these, for that matter. No, you're not. You should put yourself down, I mean. Shoes. Oh, my God, it's the same shot. Uh, well, you look tall enough to me without the heels. But each to their own, eh? I think that's a lot. Thanks again. You're welcome. I'd best be off. Um, take care, won't you? Mm. Don't you think we're pushing our luck a bit? I mean, what if Andy comes back? He's not going to come in in his muck, is he? Again, it would be stupid getting caught like this now we've planned your divorce. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We best stop then. Yeah, we should. <laughs> You've got a puncher. And you guess what? I'm doing a reading at church on Sunday. Hey, clever clogs. Have you seen it, Dad? Still a flat. Damn it. I knew there was something. Are you and Kate to be coming to watch me? Of course we will. Not shy of an audience, is she? I hope our Robert hasn't forgotten his babysitting, is he in? Yeah, probably getting the wrong side of Kate like everybody else. In that case, you best go and rescue your brother while I see to this. You thought about how you're going to finish with Donna? No need. Let her down gently, will you? Oh, yeah. Well, Rob, she's still a mate. You know, I wish it was that easy for me, but it's not going to be, is it? No. <sighs> I don't even want to think about it. It makes me feel sick. Then the thought of being without you is much worse. something. Like what? Well, I don't know, just a noise, like a dog or something. Are you sure? No. Well, Andy won't come back at this time, would he? And Victoria ain't you. We'd better get dressed. Oh, Robert, you idiot. You're supposed to be watching the time. Just calm down, will you? Keep reminding yourself he was in control, will you? <laughs> Get back a bit, Victoria. You shouldn't be so near when I'm doing this. I want to tell you something. <coughs> Where's Robert? He should be with you. But I want to tell you something first. Oh, for crying out loud. What is it? You all right? Need hand? Where have you been? I thought we said one o'clock. Yeah, well, I'm here, aren't I? What's so urgent, Victoria? I'll tell you later. <sighs> come on, then. Let's leave Mr Grumpy to it. Well, come on, then.
I've emptied the ashtrays. What do you want me to do next? Lick them clean? Tables. I'm not licking them. Have you wiped them? Twice. Is that all? Edna. Patience, Leonard. Let her acclimatise. Patience, resilience and ample sensitivity. Right. That's what's required here. Orange juice, please. You're right. You stay in your seat. I'll go and have a word with her. Hey, no, Leonard, just sit down. Oh, thanks, Leonard. You, you've just made up my mind for me. I've, I will give it another shot. I'll just finish this one first. I'm bored stiff. Oh, blame your teacher for having too many holidays. Can I have some bus fare, please? I'll go and visit Nora on my own. Right, a fiver says you tire a nagging before I run out of nose, eh? <sighs> Debbie. We both know there's a good chance your mum will win next week and be coming home, eh? Yeah, I know her as well. I can't wait, though. I know I'm going to see him every single day soon. But can we still go now? Please, I'm dying to see his little face. Listen to me. Your mum is coming home on her own. Look, I know you're upset about a decision to have him adopted, but... Well, life's tough. You'll get over it. Don't you dare say that. Why will she get rid of him now she's getting out? Look, you're just going to have to get used to it. No, you are. Oh, Debbie! We know you don't care because he's not yours. But we do, right? He's my brother, and I'm going to look after him. She just better get used to it, Dad. Silent or not, you may as well join us. <laughs> you, you can't expect us to give up and, and leave you alone to wallow. I mean, to ponder it past like it matters now. Are you listening? No. That makes two of us. Tell him to go away. He's not deaf. Obviously you are. Get on with it. Thanks, and after that you can take five for a brew. I'm sure you've earned it. What? It's good to see you're back on terms still. Well, if I'm honest, Val's not my favourite person. But she's still my scatty sister. <sighs> well, in that case, I ought to apologise for overreacting like a jealous idiot. Not miss you, Jack. In fact, I ought to thank Val and Rodney. Why is that? For showing me how lucky I am in the present. Hmm. Well, that's no problem. Glad that's sorted. And now I think I will take five for a bath, a reek of toilet cleaner. Oh, no, not just now. I'd like you to clean the tables again, please, while I get Jack a drink. Oh, I haven't got time for a pint. Why not? I'm taking you out for dinner. Does anyone require a top-up? Top-up? No, thanks. But I am fed up. It's impossible, this. More chance of... Digging your way to Australia with a plastic shovel. We can hide the past, but we can't change it. I also know there are two certainties in life, skeletons and closets. Meaning we all have them. I bet I could tell you a few tales from my past that had curl your toes. <laughs> well, don't look at me like I was a tart. Not that there's any shame in that. I mean, some of the finest women I know were, uh, are. Uh, you see, I once enjoyed a short stint as a receptionist in a brothel. Hello, Pat. I'm going now. Victoria, don't be so nasty. I want him to. Why? Well, who knows? Who cares? Will that be all? Well, I was going to ask you to stay on for a bit longer as a favour, so we could go out for dinner. I mean, we won't be late. I suppose so. What's the matter with you? That's it. And she summed it up so succinctly. She said, why won't your back sat off when you can earn a lot more showing it? Stop! No more, I can't take any more. What in God's name did you hope to achieve by sharing this filth? That there's no great shame in it that your grandma was a woman of substance with a zest for life. Stand up and be proud of your roots. What? Hold your head up high. I can't. You've just put pay to that. Oh, do you know, I'm past caring what you think about me, but would you just snap out of it for Laurel and Hardy over there? Hey, and I've just shared a revelation about my past with you. Well, this comes as no surprise to me. It merely confirms what I've known from day one. You are a shameless hussy. Get out of my way. <sighs> Look, don't take this to heart here, but I'm going after her. 
you do what you've got to do. Thanks, love. Oh, I don't know what possesses him to bother. Yes, you do. Andy knows it. That's why he's marrying you. Oh. Hey, look, just wait. What, what's this all about, eh? I really don't know. Well, I know you're hurting, but you can't keep pushing us away. We're your friends. You chose not to tell me the truth. What sort of friendship is that? Look, I know we were wrong in hindsight, but we didn't want to upset you. No, not we. You, Leonard. You are my friend. The whole village knew before I did. You would never have let that happen before that muck spreader arrived. Look, why can't you see her for what she is? Pearl didn't spread it around the village. She was trying to protect you. You see, why do you let her manipulate you like that? Oh, I accepted the pair of you, never going to see eye to eye, but that doesn't alter the way I feel about you. Then listen to me when I tell you that she is no good for you. You deserve better. I'm sorry you're wrong. Pearl's a good woman. Well, you can think what you like. Edna. Your friendship means a lot to me, and that'll never change. But I love Pearl, and that's the way it is, so you're going to have to accept it. Have I? We'll see about that. You may thank me one day for caring. You have a funny way of showing it, Edna Birch. Emmerdale will be right back. Robert. Well, that suits me. Can to cancel your taxi? No, thank you. Just you cut this nest in this house or there'll be no Easter bunny. Can I tell you something? Oh, not this again. Robert's been naughty. Oh, tell us something we don't know. What was it this time? Have you been tormenting her? What? What's she saying? You've been naughty. Well, I've no idea what she's on about. Well, go on. I'd like to know, then I know not to do it again. So I'm at Andy's. On his bed. Sloppy kissing. She saw me and Donna while, while we were... Yeah, all right. Don't need to know. Well, what do you expect me to do in my own house, eh? And you shouldn't be sneaking around. I sent her looking for you. You were supposed to be ready. Well, she's been a pain all day. Dad, listen. Oh! Stop it, both of you. What's a man supposed to do round here to get a bit of peace and quiet? Look, j just go out. Have a nice time. Taxi's here. Go and get your pyjamas on. And don't be having a go to when we've gone, eh? Meter's ticking. You ready, Diane? Lead the way, shiny shoes. Right. See you later. Bye. Oh, whoa, I'm interrupting. Sorry. No, come and sit down. No, I'm not doing him at all. <laughs> How was the library? Quite a bit. Oh. <laughs> Quite You've cheered up a lot since yesterday. Maybe I'm glad to be alive again. You haven't been to the library, have you? Emily, he's fine. Will you leave the poor block alone? Have you been looking for her? The girl with Trisha's heart. Alan told me about the story in the newspaper. I found her. She carries a name. Not, not ten miles away, mate. Can you believe that? How? I want... I wanted to see what she was like. I nearly couldn't know today. I, I mean, I swore I would, I would, I would have walked off. But I, what made you change your mind? Oh, that's the amazing bit. I mean, the decision was made for me. She dropped, she dropped this bag, right? I mean, I'm talking the perfect moment. I would have gone, but... It, you can't ignore fate. You don't really believe that, do you, Marlon? No, not straight away, but then I saw this shoe bag right now. Trisha was crazy about shoes. You're like most women, mate. But these were from her favourite shop. Did you share any of this with Carrie? No, no, she doesn't know I am. Well, that's something. What do you mean? Maybe she doesn't want to be found. Why? No good can come of this. You know that, don't you, Marlon? All I know... All I know is what I feel inside. Part of Trisha, so close. How could I let that go? I'm not angry, but I need you to listen to me. Follow what I'm saying. Look at me. 
Whatever you thought you saw before, you didn't. We were just messing around, having a laugh. That's allowed, isn't it? And there's nothing to tell. So no more silly tales. We're clear? Well, we should be. But I want this to stop here and now. You understand? Katie's not allowed, though. Katie's married to Andy. I saw you. Well, don't say that. Do you hear me? This is serious. Now, I don't ever want to hear you say that again. Dad told us never to tell Fritz. Listen. Do you realise what this could do? I am warning you. You know nothing. This is grown-up stuff. And you could be in trouble. Serious trouble. My God, you're hurting me. Look, something bad will happen to all of us. Dad, Andy, me. And then you'd have to go away. Do you want that? Do you? Answer me! Then you do as I say. You must never tell anyone what you saw. Do you understand? Say it! What must you never do? I said, say it. Never tell. That's right. Never tell.